Hey, guess who's in town? It's your boy E.T. Hey, remember, you gotta wanna succeed as bad as you wanna please. If you're somebody like me that's building, we don't tear other people down. Sure, I'm not in the business of tearing somebody down because I don't agree with what they're saying. This is still my brother, and I'm in the business of building my brother up. Mm -hmm. So only, the only people that tear down are people who are not constructed. When you operate at a spirit of excellence, yeah, yeah. It just, it, it, you rise above and you're broke because you're not getting it. That's why you're broke, because you're not stewarding. So when people ask me, E, Man, we need God, you know, and we need money. What do you think? I said, hey, get as much as both of them as you can. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting So my guest today here on the Seven Figure Squad has no requirement or no need for introduction. The world's number one most requested, inspiring, motivational speaker, Eric Hip Hop Preacher Thomas is in the house. I love it. Request it. I yeah. love it. I love it. I come a long way. I'm, I'm glad I'm requested. I used to be requested in the uh, principal's office. <laughs> uh, so it's a blessing to be uh, awesome. requested in, in, for something that's positive. 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. How are you doing? 100%. Bro, the entire audience here, the whole time you were speaking, yeah. was on their feet. Yeah. I mean, I, even if you told them to sit down, I don't think they would yeah. sit down. I, they didn't, but, uh, you know, I have to attribute that to, you know, the culture that you guys have built, you know. Um, you know, the team you've built, who you brought mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And so it's always, um, I'll just, I'll say in the, in, in the words of uh, Stafford, you know, environment Matt, Matt is Stafford, everything. Matt yeah, yeah. who's playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> environment is everything. You know, environment is everything. Formerly so, yeah, yeah, the Detroit yeah, yeah, Lions. Yeah, <laughs> so it was a phenomenal environment to speak in and a winning culture. So it just makes it easy when you get up and you're talking to people with the right mindset. So I appreciate yeah. you guys for that. 100%. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of speakers that we were uh, talking about and putting yeah. on the board, and uh, your name was at the top. You hey, spoke man. at another conference, too, as well, yes. and we wanted to yes. make sure you were here. Yeah. I want to be at all of them. 100%, <laughs> I brother. I want to be at all of them. 100%. Yeah. Now, yeah, when, you, when you talk, I think the first video I've ever seen you do was, you know, success, as yeah. bad as you want to breathe. Absolutely. I mean, I think it was like 12 years ago. That's Absolutely. A long time yeah, ago. 2007, 2008. Jeez, yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I'm going to ask, before that video came out, how long were you working your game before that? Because everybody thinks, yeah. oh, one video is just going to put you up there yeah. and you're going to be blowing up. How, how well, long I, were you? I started when I was 19 years old. So I started when I was 19 in college. Professionally, I'd say I was about 21, 22 when I started. Did my first work in Bermuda, got a check. I always came back like I was an international speaker. So I've been doing it for... Technically correct, though. Yeah, it is. You know, I've been doing it for a long time long time and there's levels you know so i've always enjoyed every level i never mm -hmm. thought that i would get to you know number one requested number one motivation. i never well, i wanted to get to that level but i think what happens you know is you reap what you sow mm -hmm. so i've tried my hardest since i was 19 20. you know whatever your hand find to do do it all your might You know, when you got, you got Hip Hop Preacher on it, yeah. and I want to uh, have some conversation with you yeah. from a faith-based yeah. uh, perspective. Yeah. You know, oftentimes in the church, you know, there, you know we, I think one of the most uh, lambasted uh, uh, videos we have is when I talk about King Solomon and yes. I talk about money from yeah. the Bible and yeah. the references of the Bible. Yeah. You know, the whole references of, you know, it's easier yeah. for a camel to get to the yeah. eye of the needle than a rich man to get into heaven. Absolutely. What's your, what's your, what's your take on that? Oh, maybe it is, but it doesn't mean you can't be rich. You know, it's just talking about the challenge of, you know, being wealthy in every area. So when people ask me, E, man, we need God, you know, and we need money, what do you think? I said, hey, get as much as both of them as you can. It doesn't have to be either or, mm -hmm. it could be both that. You can have a phenomenal relationship with God. I mean, you look at the Bible, you look at people like Abraham that was rich, mm -hmm. you know, Joseph sure. was wealthy, you know, I mean, you go down the line, Paul, Paul didn't even have to take money from the church, he was so wealthy. You know, so wealth is not, it's not an option. God says that I, I pray that you prosper even as your soul prospers. That's two different things. That spiritually I want you to prosper, but also I want you in this earth to prosper as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you have to choose. Mm -hmm. I think you need to get as much as both as you can and you need to prioritize. Because here's what I tell people. When my wife was diagnosed with MS, I couldn't put money over her 
That was prayer. God, mm -hmm. I need you. Yeah. But when I go to the gas station, I can't pray over the pump. That requires currency. You know, so they, 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 they both are appropriate, you know, in their appropriate uh, perspective. Yeah. So when, uh, you know, believers in here are talking about, you know, tithings and offerings and giving money, but, but E.T., yo, I'm broke. Yeah. And what do you expect me to give? Yeah. I ain't got nothing to give. Absolutely. I'm broke. And yeah. by the way, I've been in that situation Absolutely. too as well. I've, I've been yeah. conflicted. Yeah. And you're broke because you're not giving. That's why you're broke, because you're not stewarding. And there's a promise attached to it. It doesn't say if you are financially well off, bring ye tithes into the storehouse. It doesn't say if you're poor, don't bring it. It said bring ye your tithes into the storehouse, where they might be meat in my house. And if you bring it, he said, and I will open up the heavens and pour out. So if you're broke, it means you're not doing what he told you to do and you're not getting the promises. So it doesn't mm -hmm. make you evil. It doesn't make you, I'm better than you because yeah. I pay tithe. Yeah. But it is saying that there are opportunities that I get because I'm returning the tithe that yeah. people who don't return the tithe, you're not gonna get. And then he said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. So not only am I gonna bless you, I'm going to keep the enemy from coming in and killing, stealing, and destroying yeah. what I give you. Yeah. So I don't know if the requirement is if you have money, if you don't have money. And here's what I tell people. If you can't tithe a dollar, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very difficult for you to tithe a million. You know, I've, I've always said when people come up to, uh, and you, you're from origin, born from born Chicago, Chicago, absolutely raised in the. Yeah, my mom. Yep, yep, I was about five, six. Yep. My mom moved to Detroit, and so literally, yep. this is hard for people to believe, but my mother loved Chicago and her sister so much that we drove back every weekend for like seven years until my sister was born. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable. From yeah. Detroit to, to, to Chicago. Chicago. Wow. Friday night or Saturday morning, we'd spend the weekend, come back for her work Sunday night. So yeah, yeah my mom would drive to Chicago like it was around the corner. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. What was your money programming growing up? How did you view money? Um, you know, it was something that was, you know, for others. Wealth for, was something for others. You know, we kind of live, you know, from check to check. You know, um, wealth didn't belong to us. Like, you know, we could have money to survive, you know, and maybe somewhat strive, but not to thrive, you know? And so I was taught, hey, you live from check to check, you get a job, you rely on somebody else, you give them your best 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're with your kids when you can be, you know, whenever they need you there, you're there and your priority is work, 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 work. Um, so it was a, I had a working class mentality, you know, when I was growing up, I definitely didn't have a wealth mentality. I, I teeter top with poverty mentality. My mom would get mad at me, but for sure, a worker's mentality. Explain that. You know, your just workers just mentality. meaning that, you know, we're supposed to work for somebody. We're supposed to take our gifts and our time and our talent and use it to make somebody else's dreams become a reality, you know? Um, we don't invest in our own dreams or our own goals, you know? Um, we, 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 we can't do things that cause us to take risk. We, we gotta stay in the safety zone. Yeah. You know, we've gotta do things that are uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. a job, you know, a nine to five, insurance, whatever. You know, and it's so funny, it's always enough to survive, but it's never enough to thrive. You know, that was right. the concept. You got enough to survive, yeah. but we never had enough you know, to put us in a position where we could go away for a month or you could go to all your kids events, you yep, know? Yep. And it was just funny. It was like, I know when I was working at Michigan State, it was like, wow, my boss gets to come and go as she pleases. I don't get to go to my daughter's events when mm -hmm. she uh, gets an award, an academic award at school because I have to be at work. Even though no child, no, no college student is coming to my office at eight o'clock in the morning. Right, right. But I have to be there because, but my boss gets to come and go, you yeah. know, as she wants. And so, you know, I just realized she should get to come and go as she wants. Like she should have that luxury, but I should have it as well. I, I shouldn't have another human telling me that I can't go and enjoy my daughter yeah. and create these memories with my child. You know, America right now is in, in a funny sp space. A beautiful space. Yeah, a beautiful space, but beautiful this is a time divided space. Absolutely. Especially, I would say, in the last couple yeah, of years. Absolutely. Because I remember, you know, being in the military and 9-11 hit in a weird way, it really unified everybody. Yeah, yeah. But the last 20 plus years, it's 
absolutely it's kind of divided. So, yeah. how, you know, how do you think we got here as America? You know, with what's going on in our communities. You, you, and you've mentioned that. Oh, no question. You know, you, the, I, I've yeah. been in the most racially segregated absolutely. big city in America. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do we you get know, divided I, I, and how do we I heal? Think, I think we got here because, you know, we refused to progress. You know, I think we got here because when you look at me, I'm excited about these times. Why? Because I'm a leader and leaders solve problems. Yeah, yeah. Like we're not, you know, as a leader, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I love it. I love the fact that there's some division because now there's some conversations we can have around, you know, why are you so adamant about not wearing a mask or why are you so adamant about wearing a mask? Why are you so adamant about vaccination? Why are you so adamant or not? And so there was a time when I was growing up that you could talk about your differences and it didn't divide you. Sure. So, yeah. so now let's talk about why are our differences dividing us? Like what has happened to us as a, as a nation yeah. where I can't have my own opinion, that the only people I can be close to are people who share yeah. my exact opinion. So for me, I think it's a phenomenal time because it's like, hey, what's wrong? And let's not talk about what's wrong. Let's talk about what's the solution. Yeah. Like, how do we get to the point where as neighbors, you know, because, hey, I was a Michigan State fan. You were a Michigan fan. But that maybe on the weekend we played, <laughs> and for that two hours we played, we were divided. Yeah. But we were actually in the same room together watching the game yeah. and eating together and fellowshipping. Now, maybe during the game, yeah. you know, I yeah. sat on one side, you sat on. But even when the game was over, we were back to sure. being neighbors. Yeah. So, so at the core What's really going on? Yeah. You know, like what's really happening? So for me, uh, while it, it is uh, unique times, I'm I'm talking to more people that I never talked to before. Interesting. Or I'm on the different sides, communicating with people in a way I've never communicated with right. before, because it's an opportunity to say, hey, there's a problem, right. and as Americans, what can we do to solve the problem? And I'll be honest with you. I'm finding that maybe 75% of people are wanting to dialogue. There is that small group that's still kind of yeah. stubborn and yeah. prideful and have forgotten that like we are one and, and it's not divided. Uh, shoot, the way I look at it, uh, nobody inhabited this land, yeah. you know, 500 years ago. Sure. You know, we're all, if you want to use the word immigrants, mm -hmm. we're all immigrants, you know? So uh, why can't we talk about that? So for me, I, I think that as a Christian, um, these are times that will allow us to talk, you know, to pray with one another, you know, and see how we can get past this. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things they don't talk about a lot in churches is politics, yeah. sex, yeah. and money. Yeah. How can yeah. we improve that? I talk about all of it. Okay. Why? Because it's in the word. Yeah. Yeah. All of it is in the word. Um, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they were in politics. Like they worked with King Nebuchadnezzar. They made decisions. Yeah. You know, sure. Joseph made decisions yeah. for the king. Sure. You know, the he, Pharaoh. Yeah. He, he, he right made there. decisions for Pharaoh. Yeah. That was politics. So politics are all in the Bible. But when you don't know the Bible or you're learning the Bible from some preacher, and I'm saying you, I'm not saying you shouldn't learn from a preacher, but you should study to show yourself approved. You know that God has put us in politics. He put Joseph there so that Joseph could be an example for him. Yeah. And now Pharaoh is saying, yo, we serve the Joseph God. From this day forward, yeah. uh, Darius is saying, yo, we're going with Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, God. Yeah. They God look like they're bringing favor to our, you know, to our nation. Uh -huh. So politics are there. Sex is there. Um, uh, you know, David, which is one of my favorite characters, sure. when David is old and sick, the way they figure out he's sick is they put a young lady in the bed with him and he doesn't respond. And they're like, <laughs> David's sick. Yeah, something's wrong with David because David never responds like this. Yeah, the female, uh, uh, Samson and Delight, like, sure. it, it's all in there. Uh, Adam and Eve, sex is all in there. And I feel like if you let people who are not godly educate you on it, they're not going to educate you like the Bible is edu educated. Wow. Sex, all of them. I'm talking wow. to my daughter. She's 23. I'm like, yo, let's, we got to talk about it. And, and there's a way to do it. And you might not even do it the way the Bible says that you're going to do it. <laughs> but you need to know what the Bible says yeah. because that's your benchmark. And if you fall, you need to know what you can do to get back up. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. man, we got to talk about all of Let me tell you something. I had a friend rebuke me, um, a white male friend. And I just say that to put this in context. He did some uh, uh, mentoring with me and he said to me, Eric, how much money you want to make? And I was like, bro, why is it that that's all y'all talk about? Money, 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 money. He said, I thought you was a Christian. I said, bro, what does that have to do with? OK, this is about three, four, this is 2018. I was like, bro, what does that have to do with anything? He said, I thought you said you were a Christian. I said, I am. 
He says, well, don't you want to build churches for God? Don't uh -oh, you want to evangelize? There you go. Don't you put kids through school? I was there like, yeah. Go. He said, how many? I said, three. He said, you think God only wants ET to hip hop preacher to send three people <laughs> to school? He was like, bruh, you think he wants it in a pimp head or you want an ET to hip hop preacher head? There you, go. you think he wants it in a drug dealer's head or he wanted it in Eric Thomas' hands? And I was like, wow, wow, that makes sense. So. Yeah. I'm on a quest to become a billionaire and not for me. Like I don't have expensive stuff and I don't think there's nothing wrong with it. That's just not my swag. But now I'm using my money, my wife and I, and a group of people were able to renovate a, a medical facil facility and turn it into a church. Spent about a half a million dollars, you know. Um, and it takes money. It took I mean, money you, you and, want to do this and we were blessed to have money. it yeah. and we're making investments now. Yeah. We're trying to get as much as we can because people like Bill Gates sent some of my students from Detroit who came to Michigan State to school. Bill Gates don't even know them. Yeah. But he gave them an opportunity to go to school. Yeah. They didn't have the money to go on their own. So I'm like, yo, Bill Gates yeah. is sending kids from Chicago and Detroit, and yeah. he never been there. Yeah. Then what does God want you to do? Yeah. So yeah, more money, more, more money, money, more, more money. money. <laughs> Tell Dion when, I, when you see him, I said, yeah. must be the money. <laughs> must be the money. God is saying, yeah. I want money in your hand because you're going to steward it right, and you're going to use it for my, uh, to advance my cause. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you because you speak for a living. Yeah. And uh, what's crazy was going on in America today. Joe Rogan has been facing yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, there's yeah. so many different characters, right? Yeah. Are getting pulled off of YouTube. Yeah. They're getting canceled. Yeah. What's your thoughts on this whole cancel culture thing that's. that's well, you uh, know what, man? I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I don't, and I'm not saying I don't subscribe to cancel, but I think cancel is, um, you know, that's a culture where you know, people are building you up and they have the power to, you know, destroy you. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? I like, got it. I, you know, Interesting I'm not, perspective. I'm, yeah, I'm not against, you know, like, oh, people can't, whatever, to cancel, not to cancel. But I've, I've built my church. I've poured into people since 2006, 2007. These are people who I've helped get through divorce, people who I've helped not to get a divorce, people to get through cancer, yeah. help their kids go to college. You know, people not trying, people not canceling people, mm -hmm. that's entertainment to me. You understand know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, you can get canceled if you on entertainment. Yeah. I'm, I'm not an entertainer. You know, I'm a pastor. You know, I'm a, I'm a coach. You know, I'm an activist. You know, um, you, you know, nobody's trying to, the people who I have built up, they're not about to go, oh, he said, I'm through with him. Yeah. It's like, yo, that's our pastor. That's our brother. That's our friend. And I think when you're dealing with people you have a relationship with, it's different than people you don't have. You know, people who are just, you know, entertainment, that's yeah. different. Yeah. You don't have a bond with that person. Yeah. But if you are, if you have a, 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 a family, that's what I have on the internet, I have a family. Mm -hmm. These are people that I help elevate. So even if I mess up, all they're looking for is, yo, I messed up, I'm, yeah. I'm human, I'm yeah. not God, I'm gonna make mistakes. And they're like, yo, we're gonna forgive you. So I just think that to me, that's more entertainment. Like I don't have a, um, I don't have a sponsor, sure. you know, I don't that you gotta have, worry about. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have a sponsor and all that. Like, I'm not, uh, if I get kicked off of YouTube, you know, I think there are probably more people showing my stuff on their sites than I'm probably showing on mine, mm -hmm. gotcha. if that uh, makes sense. 100%. They're playing yeah. my message when they're working out, doing whatever. So, it, you know, like, yeah, I'm not formats, against guys. it. Yeah, but Audio that, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that is for, even my books, we self-published. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? So, it. you know, so now I do have a publisher now, but I, I just think I'm in a different arena. And and even with um, some people who I heard Snoop say something I thought was funny. Snoop was like, I wish they would try that. But you're talking about Snoop, who's been around since, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. late. Yeah. 80s, 90s, you know, so he's built a base. I think it's for people who, again, entertainment has built them, you know, the culture has built them, yeah. and because the culture has built them, they feel like they have the right to tear them down. But I've been around since 2006, yeah. man, doing yeah. God's will. Sure. You're going to have to get in the Holy Ghost face <laughs> to cancel <laughs> me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, the Bible says, um, you know, who the, who, who the Lord sets free is free indeed. And even when you look at David, David said, I won't touch Saul, even though he's trying to take my life because God says, touch not my anointed. You know, so I feel like, you know, I'm God's anointed. So yeah, it, Saul didn't want him to be king. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. And David gotcha. was like, hey, I could take your life, yeah, yeah. but there's a higher calling and God said, touch not. And so I just feel like when you're anointed, even if people form weapons against you, they're not going to prosper. You know, the, the, um, the, the conversation with guys like you, you're, you're in your space. You know, people either agree with you, yeah. they don't agree with you. Yeah. And sometimes people 
are afraid to put the message out Absolutely. because of the negativity. Absolutely. Even though yeah. there's 95% yeah. positive, Absolutely. it's the 5% yeah. that they pay attention yeah. to. What's your take on that? I get it. Um, psychologists say that 85% of our thoughts are negative. Wow. You know, and we have average people, no disrespect, they're saying they have about 30,000 thoughts a day. And for those of us who operate at a higher level, anywhere between 60 to 65,000. So you're thinking about for us, that could be 48,000 negative thoughts. And so there is a natural tendency toward negative. But when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. So for me, it's like people that's say. That's scripture, y'all. That's scripture. Oh, right yeah, there, right? no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> Somebody said to me, hey, e, my wife, she's like, man, you see what that person said? I said, no. She said, how did you miss it? I said, I put messages up. I don't read comments. Like, I don't read. That's not my job. I don't yeah. read comments. Yeah. That's not my work. I'm not a commenter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I am a minister. I give the word. Yeah. You like it, you like it, you don't, you don't, and you, and, and you have that right. But I don't read what people say about me because I say what God wanted me to say. Yeah. And if I said something that was whatever, I'll pray and ask God for forgiveness and move on. I'm not perfect, never was perfect, never will be perfect, but the noise, you have to cancel the noise and you have to do the will of the Lord. I think it was um, Nehemiah, I'm, I'm not, I, I hope I'm right, uh, but he said, um, I'm not coming down off the wall. You know, yeah, I'm building this thing. I'm, I'm fighting with his wall. hand. I yeah, can't, yeah. I'm building yeah. a wall. I can't yeah. come down. Yeah. I can't come off the wall to entertain y'all because yeah. I'm building a wall and I'm going to build a wall in like, it was like 52 days or something. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to build a wall in 52 days. I don't have time. And so for those of us who work, let us work. You know, like don't be entertained with the noise and people who not even build it. Because I'll be honest with you. If you're somebody like me that's building, we don't tear other people down. Sure. I, I'm not in the business of tearing somebody down because I don't agree with what they're saying. This is still my brother, and I'm in the business of building my brother up. Mm -hmm. So only, the only people that tear down are people who are not constructing. And so that, that's not my lane. That's not my group. That's not my family. I'm, I'm doing the Lord's will. And uh, I, I don't know. I know you remember the scripture where the disciples were like, who are they? What are they doing? He said, hey. Those are my other disciples. If they're not against us, they're for us. And so just because you're not speaking my message or doing, if you are a child of the, of the king and, and you believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, we brothers and sisters, you know? And uh, last question before I let you go. We're going through a funky phase the last couple of years mm -hmm. through this pandemic, yeah. lockdowns, yeah. vaccinations, yeah. And mandates and all that yeah. stuff. What would be your message to, 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 to have the average Joe Excellence. become a pro Joe? Excellence. Excellence. Can I be honest with you? And I don't even know if I should be saying this on camera, but whatever the stuff is, because I operate at such a high level, nobody even, I've never been asked. I, whatever the, I, you know, if I'm mandating, I mean, vaccinate, not vaccinate, if I'm wearing a mask, not man, I, I just do what I think is right. But nobody ever is like, eh, they like, yo, you number one, we need you in the school, we need you in the prison, we need you in the, and so I take precautions, but I'm saying at the same time, I, I operate at such a high level. Jackie Robinson got to be the first African American, because he operated at the highest level. Martin Luther King got to sit down and create legislation for people of color, women. Why? Because he was the best. Uh, uh, so I'm just saying, when you when you operate at a spirit of excellence, yeah, yeah. It just, it, you rise above some of the minutia. <laughs> like you don't, Michael Jordan, it, like, it's like he got calls. He was MJ. Yeah. I know he pushed my man on the left. You know what I'm saying? That last play against Utah. He, 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 you know what I'm saying? We know it was a foul, but it's MJ. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't call a foul with MJ making a shot, winning the championship, you can't call a foul. And I'm an MJ fan. You saw a little, a little baby, little, you know, move to the side. You know what I'm saying? You're going to put you yeah, the yeah, wrist. Yeah, you, you, you saw it. But when you operate in a spirit of excellence, you get calls. You know, there, there are certain things that, you know, you're, you're able to accomplish and you're able to do. So I would just say when you're average, you know, people do give you a hard time. Yeah. But when you're excellent and people know you're excellent, they want to be associated with excellence. Yeah. And so if you're excellent, I always say planes fly above the cloud. So it doesn't matter if it's snowing, if it's raining, as long as mm. it's not thunder and light, they go above the clouds. They're not dealing with rain and snow. They, mm. they go above that. And, mm. they, you know, and so when you're excellent, you go above some of the, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. So man, I've been, I've been, my wife and I have been safe. My daughter, I think my son got it. He's young, though. he was 24, 25 maybe at the time, and 
just walk straight through it. But um, me and my wife have been phenomenal, haven't had any issues, travel just like today. You know, we keep our distance, but at the same time, sure. take pictures, engage. And I've been, you know, I've been blessed, you yeah. know. So you again, when you're excellent, yeah. I just feel like when you're excellent, the world treats you a little different. Beyonce show up somewhere, they go, is she gonna get a little different treatment yeah. there? Uh, Seance. Seance. <laughs> I don't know who Seance is, but Beyonce just gonna get a different treatment because she operates at a high level. Gotcha. Yeah. Guys, if you've gotten some value out of this, I want to know what your feedback, your thoughts are, questions. Yeah. You agree, you don't agree, put yeah. it in the comment section below. And if you're watching this on Bellary, make sure you follow it. If you aren't already, yeah. what's wrong with you? Yeah. Make sure you follow Eric yeah. E.T. Hip Hop Preacher on Instagram. What he said. <laughs> follow me. He might get some inspiration. 100%. <laughs> that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow the Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit on notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From, from Daytona Beach, Florida, from To The Moon mm. Conference, on behalf of Eric Thomas, I'm your Money Smart PHP. Guy. PHP. Until we meet again, continue to listen. To the moon and beyond. Be Money Smart <laughs> today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.